From London, England, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in London, England for HP Enterprise, now called HPE. HPE Discover is the hashtag. This is theCUBE, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next guest is CUBE alumni, Sargalai, Senior Vice President and General Manager of HPE Communication Solutions, which is NFE, CMS, SDN, essentially telco, all the stuff going on. Right. Really the high growth areas. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Good to be here. Looking good and um, quietly building out a pretty big organization you have. Certainly you're a big part of the cloud group which has now got a lot of momentum under Bill Hilf making the decision, finally taking the right path in my opinion at least, you know, staying uh, no public cloud and building a lot of private. You then moved over after you built that out to now NFE and so just describe your organization real quick. Sure, so uh, I mean I think from a market perspective you know, we at HP see the convergence of uh, telecom and IT as a big opportunity for HP because we have both the uh, um, obviously strong strength in IT and private cloud and the future of IT, um, you know, dynamic infrastructure and so on, but also we actually have a big telecom pedigree in our CMS uh, portfolio, which is sort of a communications media and solutions. We have the HLRs, the registries, most, you know, you probably can't make a phone call in the U.S., a cell phone call without going through one of our systems. Uh, we have a lot of OSS capabilities and so on, and we run it in a lot of places, so we also have the telecom pedigree. So we see this sort of uh, um, thing between uh, IT and telecom as an opportunity for us, and as part of that, we've sort of reorganized all our assets under sort of one roof so we can go after this opportunity, and we created what's called the CSB, which is the Communications Solutions Business, and under that business, uh, we have our NFV effort, uh, we have the CMS group, and we also have uh, S Carrier SDN, which is part of the acquisition that we did of Contextstream uh, earlier this year. So Meg Whitman tapped you, remember we had a conversation a couple of years ago when, when you were looking at this opportunity. It's really an emerging, big opportunity revenue-wise for HP, certainly with their install base incumbent uh, relationships, but now with the market dynamics, the industry forces, plus the technology forces were really pushing at this new area. What is the opportunity for the folks who aren't really following alone, or that, in, that aren't inside the ropes, what are you attacking? What market are you going after? What are the industry forces and what are the technology forces? Sure, um, well, we can spend a few hours discussing this, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but in general, if you look at what's happening in, in, in the telecom or in the, in the carrier space, right? So telecom and carriers about you know, providing services, cellular service, landline service, cable to some extent, uh, pretty much any sort of access uh, is through that. You know, they've been building these networks over the last 20 years, very reliable, high capacity, very successful, made a lot of money. Um, but uh, in the last few years, what's been happening is that a lot of the revenue, the, a lot of the profit of the networks is moving to someone else, uh, i.e. the OTTs, over the top players. So for example, you know, a lot of the revenue used to make is you know, billions and billions of dollars in text messaging, right? When's the last time you paid for a text message? Right? Everybody uses WhatsApp or so forth, right? They made a lot of money um, on uh, you know, data, but data now is becoming cheaper and cheaper because they got to compete. And so... They're, they're losing their grip on their... Uh, they, they, what's happening is they're, they're losing the, the services revenue, the, 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 the profit in these net, the, the profit of these yeah. networks is being taken by someone else. They're still providing, they have to provide more and more capacity, so they actually have to do more, and they're getting less for it. Yeah. Not a good place to be. Uh, the good news... Well, they got to uh, innovate too, they got to, it's like it's an enterprise, they got to get top line revenue up. So, the good news is that uh, while, you know, in the last decade, as we all know, right, from talking about the cloud, right, there's a whole new model of how to do things, right, in terms of virtualization, cloudification of infrastructure that allows you to move to a much uh, more automated and much more dynamic environment. Uh, but their networks aren't built that way because they were designed before this technology existed. True. And so now they have to transform to this. And this is what's, you know, NFV, network function virtualization, really is that thing, but it's really about how do I, in the telecom space, pick and choose all the innovations that have happened in IT and cloud in the last decade and leverage them for transforming my, to a much more automated, much more dynamic capability so then I can provide 
you know, better services. So you know, if you want to do a circuit, let's say these days in a business, right? Sometimes you have to wait two weeks, three weeks. I want it in a minute. Like, why would I want to wait two weeks, right? Yeah. In the cloud, I can get something with pressing a button, right? There's no reason for that. Um, things have to be automated. Today in the OSS system, right? Lots of people involved, lots of people. Very expensive, right? If you have expensive people, you want them utilizing new services, building new services, not operating stuff. It's a huge opportunity. They basically have to rewrite their business from scratch well, while operating at scale. So how much of that transformation enables new markets for these guys and expands their TAM sure. to maybe traditional IT spaces. I think, I think uh, the first play here is a defensive play uh, because in fact, uh, when you talk about this industry, the industry is somewhat contracting because uh, you know, the CapEx is going down, they're trying to be more efficient, but for HP this is a huge opportunity because we're not a big player here and it's coming our way because it's coming towards IT and telecom. However, you're, as you're, you're right, right, if they do, if they play their cards correctly, this can also provide them new revenue streams. Because, uh, you know, like when you started doing things with the phone, when phones started having apps, all kinds of new things happen. When you can start doing services on the fly, on demand, new things pop up, new things that you didn't think about before. But the first step is to get their CapEx under control and to get their OpEx under control and then move to a, more, to a much more ads out environment so they can roll out services much faster. Now, this whole thing means they're moving from where you are today, which is today they have these vertical stacks. So they buy a vertical stack, let's say for mobile, they buy a vertical stack from one vendor all the way down, locked in, doesn't really change much. Um, and they want to move to a horizontal platform. And, and the way I sort of explain this to people, and again, this is not exactly the same, but it's a, look, remember in the old days you bought like your, your, your chocolate bar phone from Nokia or, or whatever, and it came with a bunch of apps. They weren't that great, but you know, you came with some games, you know, Snake or something, and if you wanted new apps, you had to get a new phone. That's where the telecoms are today. You want, it, you want new apps, you got a new hardware, okay? This is, we're moving to a horizontal platform, which is the platform that HP will provide will be more like an iPhone, and then on top of it there's a bunch of apps. You can put any app you want, and that also opens it up that anybody can develop apps. So you know, in the old days, you couldn't just develop uh, you know, games for phones, but now anybody can develop an app, it's very easy. So the same way, one of the ways that the telcos are going to control their costs is by, uh, opening the whole app marketplace to new entrants. And we actually at HP have a whole thing called an open NFV program that's driving that uh, and creating a whole ecosystem so we can enable that to happen. Talk about some of your successes. What have you got, you, you, you've been doing a lot of good stuff. Rumor has it around the, the water cooler. He's got amassing a organ, large organization, actually three divisions. Um, can you share any color around some things you've knocked down in the market or um, successes you feel proud of? Well. First of all, I think in general in the NFV space, uh, you know, uh, I can't really get into numbers, but you know, the revenue growth has been uh, more than we, we we had very very high targets and we exceeded all the targets, and you know that's because the market's moving and we're going where it's going, and when you are on something that's going this fast, if you just get on it, yeah, right, it's like a rocket ship. So that's been going very well, and, it, and that's every different pieces. It's not only software, it's servers. Yeah. It's storage, it's networking, but that, that, that whole market is, is like on a ramp like this and we're riding that market. Uh, so that's gone really well. Um, you know, in terms of rolling out NFV solutions, you know, we've launched a bunch of different capabilities, uh, but you know, we, we are also, you know, the telcos, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, right, work through POCs, right? They don't just deploy stuff. And so they <laughs> want to do a POC, <laughs> they want to try it out, they want to prove it. Yeah. But we've done over 50 POCs, uh, proving technology with them. Many of them have turned into some deployments, and so we feel we are sort of the right place uh, as this market is sort of moving. Uh, yeah, but once you get the POCs, you're out, you're in you're in the clear. You're deployed. That's kind of uh, like in some cases. Yeah. I mean, a lot of cases. <laughs> if I mean, they work. <laughs> no, I mean, in a lot of cases they run the POX to prove a business case, and then they go back and do a few things. But generally speaking, if you're involved in the POX, when they when they roll out the services, which could be two years later, uh, you're in the in the driver's seat, and so that's what's important. I think the key is in the telecom space, you have to have a long breath, which is also an advantage for HP because you know we're going we're in for the long haul here, mm -hmm. uh, and we can invest heavily, build the ecosystem, work with customers, invest in open source. Part of the big piece here is that they want to move to open solutions; they don't want to be locked in, and so we're investing as part of our open stack investment. Obviously, we have a long history there, so we're pushing very hard in this area. Other areas that we've done really well, we have a product called NFV Director, uh, which is used for bridging between the old and the new, because a lot of their stuff, you know, they have existing OSS, BSS systems. If you're going to connect it to virtual systems, they don't operate the same way, you got to connect it somehow, they, you know, you're not going greenfield here. So that product's done really well, uh, really has a lot, of, uh, a lot of excitement by customers. So, so I think we, we feel that we're in a really good position relative to where the market is going. So business is good. 
You can't give us numbers, good. but when HP reports numbers in networking, you're in that no. number somewhere? Not, you're somewhere no. else. Are they going to break your numbers we're, out? We're, we don't spam. break them out. Um, we are in the networking piece. Oh, you are, okay. So no, not only. So we, we break them oh, into okay. different so components. I build solutions, Okay. right? Some of go. it will fall in networking, some of it will fall in servers, some of it will fall um, in, in storage, some of it will fall in software and so forth. Uh, they don't break it out, maybe break it out at a later stage, but this is, yeah, yeah, you sure. know, this is seven figure, I mean, this is big. But it's piece, it's, not, a, it's going through different yeah, parts of the organization. Yeah, it's going through different parts, and the reason right. we structured it this way is because we're building solutions and you want alignment right. between the BUs who are providing some of the components, I mean, some of it I'm developing, but some of the BUs are components, and the, 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 the team that's selling it, right? You want everybody aligned, otherwise, like if they don't get revenue from what I'm selling, why would they support me? So that way you get full alignment across the organization and everybody, is very supportive and very interested in, in growing this market because it benefits them. Absolutely. So if you're a storage guy and I'm selling more and more storage into yeah. NFV, you're going to go and do whatever I ask you to do to build the solution for me so you can sell more. So it's kind of a hybrid P&L or? It is a hybrid P&L. Yeah. There's yeah. some, in the CMS piece, it's the full P&L, but it's a hybrid P&L because it's, again, it's about creating solutions, mm -hmm. leveraging technology that we have, some of it we develop, some of it even comes from partners. Uh, and providing those solutions to customers. So Bev, I'm sensing big opportunity here with legs. Last time we talked, you had sort of described, I had said, some people sort of say, well, the, the 1.0 of NFE really only affects my you know, hardware you know, piece, it allows me to use different pieces of hardware, almost like you know, virtualization did mm -hmm. for different servers. And you said, yeah, that's true. We got to take care of that, and then it's on to the sort of application piece. Can you give us a sense, Sars, how long this journey's going to take? Is it, so, um, you know you know when a journey starts, no one really knows <coughs> how a journey ends. I mean, we, we characterize a journey into sort of four piece parts, and they're not perfect, of course, and so on, but it sort of gives you a framework for looking at it, which we feel, you know, the first part is what we call um, decoupling. So, you know, this is where you just say, okay, I'm going to separate the hardware from the software. And that's largely been done, but the benefits are somewhat limited, besides the fact that you can now have, you know, you can use more standardized soft, uh, hardware. The second piece is virtualization. So this is where you say, okay, I, I want to run more than just one thing on hardware, I want to run two. Now you can say, well, how hard is that? Well, it's not that simple because there's performance issues. One of the things about NFV is that performance is really important. So it's not like a typical workload in the enterprise where here, you know, milliseconds matter. So running multiple is not that trivial. This is where we have technologies like DPDK and other things that we work with Intel and others on to ensure that you can get really fast bandwidth. That's the second stage. That's really where the market is today, but a lot of it is lift and shift. So you take an existing app and you don't really redesign it, you just virtualize it. And you optimize the platform, which is fine. But Get more efficient. Yeah, it's okay. better, but you know, that's, not, that's like when you do you know, VM vending versus real cloud, right? So then the next phase, which is where we're sort of pushing into right now, it's cloudification. And that's when you really move to resource pools, starting to have apps that are more uh, horizontally designed, and so on, but that obviously requires you to rewrite the apps. So I would say, you know, today we're in the virtualization area and people are starting to think about cloudification. The benefit of cloudification is you really start to get operational efficiencies because you're moving to full automation. And then the final stage, and again, these are not you know, perfect, they could be right. in different parts, could move faster than others, is what we call uh, decomposition, where you say you move into full microservices. So if you look at you know, your 50 apps that are running and you say, well, 80% of the functionality is shared, let's just create a bunch of microservices mm. and leverage that. Uh, and you know, you, again, going back, using the same iPhone uh, uh, metaphor again, even though it's not a really good example, you say, look, a given app on the iPhone, it doesn't do the presentation layer, it doesn't do the communications layer, it's just a bunch of algorithms. You can do the same thing here at some point once you get decomposition. And the steep part of the OGIVE curve is between two and three, is that right? Uh, yeah, two and three is where it gets, starts to get interesting because the apps have to be redesigned. Um, and look, there, there's no right or wrong. It's a question of depending what app you do and what you're trying to achieve, but if you say, okay, well, well, you know, five or 10 years from now, what's it going to look like? It's going to look like decomposition. How we get there needs to be a business case focus, not a technology focus, right? So how can I get advantages? Where can I get better results? There's no reason to redesign something if you can get what you want in its current design. Why waste your time? But what I always tell people is, okay, but if you started from zero, how would you design it? Right. Sorry, talk about the HP transition. Obviously, it's now official on November 1st. Been operating as a split company prior to that. A lot of big shift, IT stuff went happen, all that stuff went down. They were showcasing on the, on the, um, on the keynote, first day. The, key, the, the floor here is not built by division. You mentioned solutions. What's your take on the new HP Enterprise? What's the vibe, what's your observation? Certainly, people seem relieved that the shackles are off from the noise. 
I mean, the strategies have been right on the on track with the on the converge side. Composable's out there. What's your take? Well, first of all, I think um, you know the, the, what IT, what HPIT did during this, and the, 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 all the folks who were working on the separation did was quite amazing. If you think about you know separating these huge companies, seventy-year-old company, we didn't really notice it. Like one morning. You know, you press the button and within uh, 10 minutes your computer was now HP, your email changed, everything changed, which is, I mean again, <laughs> you can talk about it, but it's like, it was amazing, because we didn't know, we, like, this whole thing hasn't really affected Non-disruptive operations. No disruption. Like, I really had no disruption. I mean, some systems were off for a few days, but in general, no disruption. One morning you came in, your email changed, everything changed, automatic. So, just the fact that our IT knows how to do that, that's a skill that is pretty rare. In fact, we're just going to market it now to companies that are doing similar things. So that was amazing. I mean, we didn't, we, you know, we were like, hmm, we'll see what that happens, right? We yeah, thought, yeah. but now what happened? Well, <laughs> I'm going to hit the beach, yeah, I won't yeah. be doing any work. We'll be down for, you know, uh, <laughs> and John Hinshaw and those guys did an unbelievable job. It really is a big unbelievable. deal. Unbelievable. Uh, I, yeah. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't experienced it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of separation, I think there is a good vibe. I think uh, it's more a question of there's a, a good focus now. Um, you know, as Meg says, you know, she's got the people she wants on the bus, and the bus is moving. And I think you saw. Now they got to be great. Now it's all in the open. And you saw, and you saw the, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the shows and stuff. It's very solution oriented. It's you know, we're getting away from this sort of BU centric element. And customers, you know, want to deal with one entity. They they want to deal with HP, not with business units. That's part of also what my organization does for telcos. They deal with us, and we hide the the complexities of the business units. So I think that's moving more and more. So I think you know, you guys are here. You tell me, but I think the vibe is very positive. Yeah. Well, and then the, then there's the balance sheet, you know, which is just a beautiful thing. So I wondered, do you have a big shopping list in your pocket there? Are you going to do M&A? I already did M&A, <laughs> right? I bought Contextream. So, you know, look, look, we are going to, I am not here to discuss. You spent your, <laughs> you spent your allowance already? I'm not here to discuss uh, uh, anything we do. I would just say no, that philosophy, we're mean. going to invest very heavily in this market. Uh, we're going to obviously do things uh, as much as possible organically, and we are investing heavily organically. But, you know, if there's opportunities that, that we feel will help us with our customers, we will partner first, and that's part of our open interview. We have a huge partnership, but if we feel that we can help, you know, in some cases, for example, if a customer will tell us, well, this company's really small, and I, I can't really buy a solution for them. I want them under the HP banner, because then you can stand behind them. Then, you know, we would obviously consider that. I don't see any massive things, but obviously opportunistic tuck-ins yeah specifically to solve customer problems are always an option. Yeah, but that really wasn't an option a couple years ago. I mean, you were sort of on ice for a while, and then now... Well, we were in the penalty box, right? Right, at least it's an option, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're back skating. We're in the penalty so. box. And, you <laughs> well, know. now you're out in the open, you're out, you're out, everything's done, so now there's no place to hide, right, for HP. But um, let's talk about this show, obviously a good show, enterprise focus, you're obviously Telco, you got Mobile World Congress coming up. Oh, yeah. Thoughts on that, can you share some insight on what you guys are going to do there? Well, how the show has changed over the years? Can you talk about that? This just show quickly? or Mobile World Congress? Mobile, mobile World. Yeah, so this show, although this show is enterprise centric, you know, I do have about 100 or so customers here. Especially in Europe, there's a lot of telecom guys. And in fact, we've had a lot of meetings and they've, they've come, you know, part of what we do also with telecoms, we help them in their go to market and get to enterprise customers. So we have actually had a lot of activities here with, with telcos. But yeah, this is our, our show, obviously, is Mobile World Congress. Um, you know, just There'll be a reveal. I mean, we, we have yeah. plans there. Uh, you know, is, you know, we, 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 you know, this is a, a very important show for us. Mobile World Congress is primarily an opportunity, uh, you know, for Meg, myself, Antonio, and folks uh, to meet with the yeah. CEOs of our top customers. That everybody's there. The, the main value of Mobile World Congress is that everybody on the top is there, and you literally go, you know, for a week, hour to hour meeting with CEOs and CTOs of the of your customers and, and working through them. So that's that's very valuable, and having Meg there. You know, is really a, a benefit. I can She's have do her, some yeah. calls with customers. Oh yeah, I mean, when I, in mobile commerce, Mike Meg is there back to back, oh, day in day huge. out, meeting with customers. I mean, she's fully committed. Meg meets with customers a lot. I don't know, eighty percent of her time. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Yeah, she, she is. Meg is, you know, she's our top salesperson, right? Yeah, I like how she thanked in her keynote. One that I love was when executives thank customers at the customer event. Before they get into the whole circumstance, pomp and circumstance, they, they say thank you for your business. I love, you can't say that enough when you have good customers, thank you for the business, especially now more than ever. Sargalai here, making ways, making things happen at HP, NFV, Telco, inside the cube, good to see you, great, great to see you, looking good, getting always. in shape there. We got to take some uh, notes from you on that one, thanks so <laughs> much. This is live coverage here at HPE Discover. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.